Welcome back to the module of uh, prostate cancer of the ESO online. And now we are speaking with uh, Stephen Jonio about the, the treatment of biochemical recurrence after first line treatment of surgery. We are listening to you, Stephen, and maybe we will raise some points at the end of your uh, presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, treatment of BCR post surgery, there's new data which has appeared uh, very recently. First, maybe let's look a little bit at what is the right definition of biochemical recurrence, which is very often used. It's 0.2 in the EU guidelines. It used to be even higher, 0.4 in American guidelines earlier on. But those cutoffs were mainly driven by the fact that these cutoffs were predictors of ending up having metastatic disease later on. And they should not per se be used to make treatment decisions, uh, but we'll talk about this uh, later during um, the presentation. Now, what has changed in the guidelines, and that is very interesting work that has been done by the Prostate Cancer Guidelines panel, is that Biochemical recurrence was related to, or was as was uh, was looked at, whether uh, which definition really covers the important biochemical recurrence which should be treated, and which definition could actually identify patients in whom possibly a uh, watch and see uh, policy could be could be uh, followed, and. The two definitions on the screen show that low-risk BCR uh, is, def is defined by combination of PCA doubling time more than one year and a Gleason score less than eight, whilst high-risk BCR are doubling time below one year or high Gleason score. And using this definition, um, Deria Tilke from uh, the Martini Clinic actually validated on a large database uh, from the Martini Clinic this, de this definition. And apparently it really uh, clearly splits the whole group of uh, BCR patients into a clear low risk group with a very low risk of metastasis free uh, survival and a very low risk of prostate cancer, uh, very high uh, prostate cancer specific survival. Whilst the high risk group is clearly a group at risk for developing METs and for even dying of the disease, so deserving treatment. So the guidelines have changed and now they say, look, look first at in which category your patient belongs. If he's in the low risk group, uh, then he's got a low risk of, uh, by, of uh, metastatic relapse and probably you can as well decide to wait and see and do not do anything immediately yet. Next is the new data we have on, um, well, whether you should adjuvantly treat patients or whether you could essentially wait until you have PSA relapse and whether you can wait until then before you irradiate. And these are data here from the RADICALS trial, which have been presented recently at the, the ESMO trial, at the ESMO meeting. And basically the trial uh, as a whole uh, clearly showed that salvage on the condition that you give early salvage radiation gives exactly the same biochemical progression-free survival rates when you compare it with adjuvant radiation therapy. Moreover, at the same ESMO meeting, there was a meta-analysis uh, which was presented combining radicals plus RAVES and JITUK, AFU-17, showing in the meta-analysis very overlapping results. But I'm showing here the patient characteristics data, and if you take into account what I just said about new definitions of BCR subgroups, well then you clearly recognize that in the patient characteristics there were very few patients at high risk for developing metastatic disease later on during uh, the course of the disease. So the trials really focused on rather low risk uh, recurrent patients. And even though they may be positive, still we don't know for sure and we don't know exactly what to do with patients who have high risk or multiple high risk features. So they are helpful, but they don't solve the whole problem. And then the other issue, uh, which has also been yeah, recently um, uh, published and is also included in the guidelines is, if you wait until salvage radiation, then the big question mark is, should we always add um, ADT to the salvage radiation? And this is the data from Shipley, New England Journal of Medicine, showing that two years of bicalutamide provides overall survival benefits, provides prostate cancer survival benefit, 
if you add it to salvage radiation in the patients included in this trial. But many of these patients had measurable PSA after surgery, so they didn't go to undetectable. They had high-risk features. Many more patients here had high-risk features, high PSA values, high Gleason scores. And those patients with high-risk features were actually the ones who benefited most. Those with low-risk features don't benefit much from adding ADT to the salvage radiation. And these results were more or less confirmed by um, the JITUC um, uh, 16 trial, um, which were also recently updated and published in the Lancet Oncology, showing a progression-free survival even metastasis-free survival benefit from adding radiotherapy to the salvage radiotherapy uh, um, treatment. Now, this is the update, but there are some questions which I would like yeah. to raise, uh, or you to raise, to um, the colleagues here at the table. So, first question Go ahead, would be, if I may, mm. uh, what do you guys think about the implementation of the BCR risk groups into the latest updates of the guidelines? Do you like them? And you will use them from now on in your clinical practice. Do you, know, are, are, do you want some further validation first or will you never use them because they are a rough instrument and they don't uh, really, uh, they are not patient tailored? So Nicola, what is your opinion? You might believe I'm biased, but I already use them in every practice. Especially for low risk, at relapse, if they belong to the low risk, I clearly explain to them that maybe it's useless to treat them immediately. And I must be convincing because most of my patients follow okay. the way to wait. Alberto, are you convinced by this uh, stratification? I am, I am. Uh, two comments. First, I'm very happy that finally we get rid from this 0.2 nanogram milliliter definition, which makes no sense. How you can find the threshold for a biological, you know, uh, event like uh, a BCR. So I'm really happy that the EAU panel get rid of this. And second comment, uh, it's very interesting to, re to, to, to see that also for the radiotherapy BCR, the panel of the EIU goes in the same direction. So they ask you first to define the risk group of the patients even after radiotherapy. So this sort of unification of the biology in the two situations, I like that very much. It goes into the good direction. Another point you want to raise? Yeah, there's another question I would like to ask. Um, are the data now, which, from, which have been presented from radicals and artistic meta-analysis, convincing enough to only propose salvage radiation, stop using adjuvant radiation? Do you say, yes, the results are very convincing and I will never use adjuvant again? Or do you say, I'm not sure, but because the patient selection in those trials was maybe too much uh, skimmed to uh, the lower risk uh, subpopulation? Alberto, briefly. Yeah, very briefly. I, I really think we have to have more data on the population of patients, they may benefit from adjuvant radiotherapy, which is the high risk population of patients, as you said. Mm -hmm. For the time being, we have, we have not those data, so I would be very careful. And Nicola, few Exactly the same thing. Two things, the subgroup risk, and second, the follow-up, which is so far very short. Yeah, correct. So, I don't buy the results so far. The last question I'd like to ask is, will you use ADT with your salvage radiotherapy? Uh, Yes, I will follow the Shipley trial and you use bicalutamide because there's overall survival benefit proven with that approach. Or do you believe the JTURK data and say, no, six months of ADT is probably enough, even though we don't have the survival data yet, or they may never show. Um, or do you say, no, I will use ADT selectively, and how then do you select your patients for ADT? Nicolas, together with you are French. Radiation. Do you stick to the French trial? Well, uh, Let's say if you only salvage patients that are in need for salvation, that is a high risk, yeah. then you need to combine ADT. Is it then six months or two years? Honestly, I don't know. But you have to combine ADT. Okay. Alberto? Yeah, this is a good remark. If you stick to this nowadays EAU definition, we will only treat high risk patients. And this, by definition, will need some form of ADT. I. I randomized patients in the JTUC trial, so I would go for six months, but this is just you know, my wishful thinking. So just final comment on that. We will have a trial, which is called the lobster trial, long, better than short-term uh, radiation. It's gonna be a multi-center trial. We're also going to try to include uh, centers from outside of Belgium. And we will test six months of ADT 
not beclutamide, versus 24 months, two years of ADT in the in this setting. The, so data will be coming. In the future. In the future. Thank you, Stephen, for this uh, very interesting state of the art. Thank you, guys, for your involvement in this uh, module uh, dealing with prostate cancer. And uh, we will uh, meet you, dear colleagues, online very soon for uh, new modules of ESOU online.